Hi everyone, my name is Christian and I'm going to be sharing with you a dream that I had in November 15, 2023. That was almost three weeks ago. I am a bit late in sharing it. I've been really busy. It's been difficult for me to find the time to share, but on my way home from work, I felt this urgency to share now. I'm going to read it off of my notes and then I will explain a little bit. I dreamt that this woman was in a public place. It was like a meeting room and this woman and the people there were praying. Then they were interrupted and she saw another sister in Christ. So they were believers and they sat in the table with the other people that were there in the room. With that interruption came in two men and these two men started to sit them down to speak to them teach give a, a study they, they started to read where the people were following along and i remember seeing that the people in the room the believers were wearing like with their like necklaces with their name tags that stood out a lot to me in the dream where it was very important their identity was very important the main leader was a tall uh, lighter skinned man he sounded serious he had a serious voice I remember this woman had a book in her hands, which I knew to be the Bible. And this light-skinned man, a white man, he kept reading and repeating the same verses over and over, certain verses over and over from a chapter. This woman was looking for those verses. She was reading along and looking for the ones that he kept repeating, but she couldn't find them. And he kept repeating it as if waiting for her to see them and, and read along. But he saw and he knew that those verses were missing from her book. This woman could see there was a cutout in that page in the book where those verses were supposed to be. There was a cutout and in that cutout, in the edges, there was blood in those, in that page. <sighs> this woman then saw her daughter standing next to her, also trying to read and follow along and follow what was being read. But this other man that was like helper or assistant or someone next to the leader, he looked different. He was shorter, bigger, weight, medium, dark skinned with black short hair and he had a beard totally completely different to to the other man and this man he told her to go sit down he pointed at a chair that was like three chairs away from where the woman was which i think was her mom i think it was like a mother and a daughter they were close they were related he told the little girl to go sit down like a distance away from her it was like three chairs away so the girl ended up sitting like around the table on the other side so it was like far but close at the same time to where she could still see her daughter. And the mom didn't say anything, but she felt so uncomfortable with having this person close to her that she cared and loved for be separated from her at a distance from her where she could see her, but she wasn't right next to her, like with her. She was concerned for her safety. She cared and I could feel the emotions of safety and protection towards her. But she didn't say anything and she allowed it because she realized she could still see her. She still knew about her. She could see and know how she was doing and where she was. The book that was being read, I knew it was the Bible. A book in a dream represents truth and judgment. But it was, we were getting knowledge and it had to do with some sort of decision making being done and it's important knowledge concerning truth and judgment and there was blood there was blood in these verses that were cut out blood in a dream can symbolize passion like caring for something so much it's a wake-up call alertness danger it could be other things but generally speaking that's what it could mean and then seeing the mother and the daughter was a close relationship it was about closeness it's about relationship it's about belonging to one another you like unity you caring for that bond you caring for that closeness but also resembles unresolved issues and also somehow there's some type of overstepping of boundaries after this it jumps to another dream where this woman was kidnapped this woman was kidnapped 
she saw people fighting for her they were arguing these people wanted her they wanted to take her and she was just there not knowing what to do in the middle of them fighting for her the woman was scared that they would touch her that they would hurt her but as she was there just waiting terrified a man steps in and this man was different than those other people fighting for her this man was very calm and very confident. And even when he spoke, he sounded in control and caring, very caring. And he stepped in and he said that the woman was dirty. He said that the woman is dirty and she should get cleaned up. He was concerned about her, specifically her cleanliness. He said she's dirty and that she needs to get cleaned up. He cared about her. I remember he said she needs to get cleaned up first. First. She needs to get cleaned up first. He carried her and he took her away in a loving, protecting, caring way. The other man didn't even have a chance to say anything because he, he was very confident, very in control. So he just said what he said with very few words picked her up and took her and he took action and the rest of the men didn't even have a chance to get a word in or to have any say. When this man picked her up and carried her and took her away, I could feel that she did not feel scared with him. She was not afraid. She felt cared for and protected. She felt seen. So this man put her in a room. It was a small room. It was a room that was like a hiding place. He was like protecting her and hiding her. I remember seeing that she was on a bed. I remember her laying, just trying to have some rest, just waiting. It was like a waiting, a waiting moment to see what's gonna happen. And I remember that the lights were off. It was dark in there, but not a scary dark. It was more like a hiding dark. Like when you're in hiding, but for a good reason. Because you're protecting yourself. You don't want to be seen. You don't want to be noticed. You don't want to be taken. But there was a window above the bed. And there was curtains over the window. And on top of the curtains, you could see light come in. The light from the window, you could see that light coming in. And that's all you could see in the small room. That light helped because... I remember seeing a spider coming down from the top. It was coming down slowly. And the only reason why I saw the spider and the woman saw the spider was because of that light that was coming in. Even though it was like not a lot, it was enough to see what was there to shine on what was in the darkness and see, revealing the danger of the spider. And this woman told the man there was a spider there and he got up to try to kill it. He wanted to protect her. He swung at it. And when he did that, he didn't hit her. He didn't hurt her because I remember the spider was coming down towards the right shoulder, but like right next to her face. He could have hurt her by trying to protect her. He could have hurt her by trying to kill that spider that was harming, but he didn't. He didn't hurt her. He just swung and he hit it just in the, at the right angle, knowing what he was doing and carefully enough for it to be hit and fly off, off of the shoulder because it was coming down towards the shoulder. The woman was terrified that he would hit her or that the spider would bite her or that anything would go really, really bad. But he hit it perfectly to where it flew off of her and it landed on the floor. I saw the spider fall and hit on the floor and then it got up and it attempted to run away. So there was an attempt of continuing getting away. When it got up and ran, I was surprised that the woman got up. She ran and she got the courage to stab it. She stabbed it right in the middle. I remember seeing the spider ooze and it was oozing its guts were spilling out as it was trying to attempt to escape it was moving slower and slower as it was dying and then it stopped then i remember him taking the woman to the restroom and putting her in the restroom he left her in the restroom and this woman was able to look 
through a window in the restroom and i remember she went to the window and she saw men outside but in the crowd of men there was one man that everyone was listening to everyone was talking to you could tell that he was the leader this man i guess sensed that the woman was looking at him so this man turned around and he looked his eyes landed on the window where the woman was looking through somehow the shower was on so there was a shower right where the window was in the restroom and he saw he saw showers like a shower of water the woman saw and heard where he asked the men there who was in there? She got so scared thinking that he was gonna come in and find her. He was gonna come in and get her. He was gonna come in and take her. I remember her feeling so scared. Somehow, this woman sneaked out and went to a nearby house. She, she was hiding but found her way to this place, to this house. When she went in, quietly sneaking, she went into the living room area of this house. There was a lady in the living room. This lady seemed very nice, a good person, friendly. The living room itself was clean. This lady looked clean and caring and helpful. The woman that sneaked in, this victim, she started to put some shoes on because she was barefoot. This whole time she had been barefoot. As she, When she put the shoes on, she saw the lady, but she just put the shoes on and now she was going to turn around quietly because she was about to escape with the shoes on. This really clean nice friendly looking woman in the middle of the living room told her to wait that she would help her she saw and heard men outside coming towards the house from another door another entrance in the house so she wanted to help this lady sneak out safely through the door in the living room i believe she wanted to cause like a distraction she just wanted to help this girl successfully leave the living room and leave the house without anybody seeing her. She wasn't gonna say anything. She was gonna help her be able to escape. A restroom can symbolize vulnerability, letting go, a need of having to let go, letting go of negative emotions and just frustrations that you have. Also a, a type of detox, a, a type of cleansing, a type of purification of self. It's very intimate. I feel like when you dream of the restroom, it's a very intimate place to be, an intimate part of who you are, symbolizing intimate feelings that you have. The shower has a lot to do with healing, healing from past events, and also cleanliness, a new start, like an optimism for, for the future, being hopeful. It's a, a form of purification. Physically and spiritually, we know that spiritually, it has a lot to do with the Holy Spirit, with our spirit. Having the Holy Spirit is the most important thing that we need. So it's physically and spiritually preparing. You're preparing for something. You're getting ready for something. It can be something that you're hopeful for. The living room in the dream is known to be like the heart of a home. It's a very important place to be, a place of love, a place of gathering, a place of unity, a place of family, where you hold everything close and near to you, which is like her heart, right? And her being barefoot, being barefoot could symbolize fear of losing ground wanting to have ground but you're also fearing that you've lost ground and, and then you're also looking you're looking to find ground you know finding yourself finding something more reliable more sturdy like a foundation of course the spider can symbolize awareness fear and death loss of independence or control that's how you could feel or be when you're in front of a spider or attacked by a spider or in the presence of a spider that could be harmful, hurtful, deadly. After this scene, it jumped into like another vision. In this vision, I myself felt like I was receiving some clarity, some type of understanding because in my dreams, I don't understand right away. As I'm waking up, I'm trying to think and I'm trying to understand. I'm still also trying to remember, make sure I don't forget anything. I pray right after for the Lord to continue to give me revelation. And then there's things that I do understand, like, like automatically. I just know and other things I have no idea and I don't know. I just trust that God is in control and God knows what he's doing. And I just stay obedient in sharing whatever I feel is safe to share. So... In this vision, I saw two groups of people. These people were fighting each other. They were divided, so they were separate. They were not 
together. And I remember so clearly seeing that these two groups of people were underlined with a color. One of the groups of people underlined in red and the other group was underlined in blue. That was the last of it. That vision was the end of that whole dream. As I was coming out of my dream, confused and remembering, trying to understand, I remember the book of Ezekiel. I've been reading the book of Ezekiel with my mom every now and then, at least 20 minutes every other day. It came into my mind, it clicked that I had read Ezekiel chapters 22 through 24. The book of Ezekiel came to mind. As I was waking up, I remembered. I know that that's important because that's somehow relevant. I thought, oh my gosh, there were specific verses in, in this dream. The verses that I couldn't find that were cut out and there was blood. I also know, okay, that's important. Like, don't forget that was gonna be related and somehow help me understand. If you read these chapters, which I recommend you do read them, these chapters are heavy. These chapters are heavy. <sighs> And they are related to Israel, they're related to Jerusalem. Somehow I knew that the woman was Jerusalem in the dream. And I just knew that the people that were fighting the men that were cities. These people represented cities. And of course that this man that came to her rescue and that wanted her clean, that cared about her being dirty, that cared about her cleanliness was the Lord, was God. And that the person, this woman that helped her find a way out was a believer. Believers carry the Holy Spirit in general, could be the Holy Spirit helping, guiding. I knew that in my dream when I saw the blue and the red, I knew that this symbolized some type of political issue. For example, Democrats versus Republicans and somehow related to the political parties, which I am not at all an expert in, but I knew in my dream that this had to do with politics. Just by doing your research, I know that in the Democratic Party, they are more concerned with the how part to getting, attaining legal status. And the Republican Party is more concerned with national security, border security, deportations of immigrants who are illegally in a place. Um, they're more for building walls and having restrictions in place restrictions in asylum seekers again just by doing a quick research that's what i learned they both are okay with people from other places staying but it's the way that they do it that's an issue it's the path to citizenship that they don't agree on i do want to recommend that you read ezekiel chapter 22 to 24 just to give you a little bit on that on chapter 22 it is on judgment on jerusalem's sins it says here a city that brings on herself doom herself it's a she it's a woman and i don't know i just knew that this was a woman and this woman symbolized jerusalem like i said some examples of how she brought doom upon herself it says the city that sheds blood so for shedding blood for making idols for mistreating the fatherless and widows lewd acts violating women sacrificing their children accepting bribes forgetting the lord in general in this chapter guys i looked for verses 13 to 15 because i remember when the guy kept reading the verses over and over i kept thinking of 13 14 15 i don't know why and it was in that order and when i went back to ezekiel 22 i just just looked just to see what i would find 13 14 15 and i'm gonna read it it says i will surely strike my hands together at the unjust gain you have made and at the blood you have shed in your mists will your courage endure or your hands be strong in the day i deal with you i the lord have spoken and i will do it I will disperse you among the nations and scatter you through the countries and I will put an end to your uncleanness. Just reading it. I'm not saying anything. I'm just reading because that is what I saw in my dream and I'm just reading. God knows my heart and I tell him, Lord, help me because this is it's not easy to share by faith, but we're called to do so. So here I am, Lord. Ezekiel chapter 23 is on two adulterous sisters and these sisters guys are cities they're two cities and the cities are jerusalem and samaria currently i don't know samaria i don't know what it currently is but that is what that story is on read it i 
encourage you to read it so you can get more background in general of this this dream i just have a dream that i'm sharing with info and certain specific details in it all i know is that the issue at the end of this dream and the vision was political we are called as believers to walk in the spirit the spirit of the lord we're called to be the light in the darkness we're called to do what is right, to listen to the Holy Spirit. We're called to help, to show compassion, to be set apart, to be different from the world, we're called to help one another, to love one another. That's what the Lord calls us to do. It's not easy and you could get in trouble for doing so, but we know what the right thing is to do when we have the Holy Spirit. And God tells us hundreds of times, 365 times to not be afraid. I encourage you all to pray as the Lord, how he wants you to be the light in this moment. Pray for guidance, pray to hear the Holy Spirit. Just try to do your part, standing your identity as a believer in Jesus Christ, standing your identity as a child of God, the sovereign God, the one true King. When they, I saw them wearing the IDs, that was very important. Get in the word more than anything because the woman had a Bible, had a book. He wants you to read the word. He wants you to get into the word so that you know what's happening, so that you're not lost and confused and clueless. No, you, you can hear his voice. You have his word. He wants you to be knowledgeable in what's happening in current events because everything that happens in the physical first happens in the spiritual. What's happening in the physical is a reflection of what's happening in the spiritual. So, we want to be in the know and we want to be praying and we want to step in and we want to help. We want to be the light. We want to be an example of Jesus in hard times, in dark times. We cannot be afraid. God wants us to be strong in our faith, to be strong in his love and his promises, knowing he cares, knowing that he has a purpose for all of us, knowing that he's in control, that he knows what he's doing. God knows what's happening. He's not clueless to what's happening. We're the ones that are clueless. We need to be ready. We always need to be ready. So that's it. And I want to encourage you to stay abiding in the Lord, abiding in his word, abiding in his love. And he will give you peace. He will give you understanding. He will give you everything that you need for these times because times are challenging and we need to be ready. As a church, as the body of Christ, we need to always stay ready. Thank you all for watching, for listening. I appreciate it and God bless.